What's going on guys, a big welcome to you all to our channel. We are Team Crushing the Meta and we are back with another video. This time actually we're doing something very, very, very different. It's something that may have, some of you not expect to see on our channel, but yes, it does. Uh, <laughs> we don't play this deck ourselves. There you go, Rukum, Zambaku, Dueling Dragons. Uh, I don't play this deck myself, but it's a friend of mine and... Um, yeah, I'm happy to bring it uh, a show to you guys. This would be the one and only Excel Clan that I would be interested in to play in standard. Why? Because it does give you an amazing amount of control um, on your opponent. The fact that this guy said that your opponent could not ride on the next turn from grade 3 to grade 3 is crazy because he doesn't say normal ride, he say ride. So there are Lots of things, lots of shenanigans that you could do with this deck. But before we get to the actual deck, first, if you have if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, don't forget to do that first, and then let us know in the comment section below if there are some of these decks that you still play. That some people would say it would not competitive enough to play, and some others would say that they are not even in the formats or in 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 the tier that. that the tier list if they would create a tier list um for me this deck is fun to play but it it also is just crazy strong and some people underestimate how good this deck is um and that's when they usually also pay the price all right let's go fast through the deck and then come back and explain how the deck works so first of all we have uh, four copies of the main boss the main grade three which is the four copies of zambaku then we ran three copies of uh, zengeki and then we run two copies of the new boy. And of course, last but not least, we run one Shiryuki. So four, three, two, one. It's, uh, it's amazing. It's the way I like it. For the grade twos, we run four lefts, four rights, three center. Again, you could play four, four and four. I just don't really see a reason why to play four. And also I do play the Fox, the, the great one that searches for left or right. Um, and with that, you kind of sometimes need that space behind your Vanguard in the early game. And later on in the game, you will replace it or your opponent will have retired it already. For the great one searchers, um, this is one of the cards that is very good, actually. Uh, thing is that uh, it could for a one count less, it could give a 10k power to your Fengar, which sometimes could be very devastating if you're going for your killer turn, let's say. Uh, if you're going for him, then that does make a difference because he is 17 by himself, but then he would be 27. And because of the fact that your opponent can only guard with grid zeros, they would have to perfect guard it sometimes. And using a Sentinel in this case could mean that uh, his skill will go off, so you'd still have that one extra attack. Sometimes you could do some crazy shit with this deck. But another good thing about this card is, is riding into it. This is the one and only right target that you want to go to, because of the fact that he draws your card and then you put a card from your hand to the bottom of your deck. But putting a card to the bottom of the deck is so much better than just putting it in the drop zone, which means that you could recycle your resters, you could recycle the grade threes that you don't want in your hand. Uh, next card we have on the deck is of course the four copies of the backward rester. This is the card that you definitely want to play at four. This card does help a lot with issues that the deck have or have had in the past but now not anymore. So uh, I will explain it later but just being in the rester is of course very very good. Um, then we have two of the fox. This is the card that if it boosts your Fangard and the Fangard hits, then you soul blast one to search from the top five cards for an arrester, a left or right, and then you add it to your hand, which is uh, very good, especially in the early game. You could put this behind your Fangard, pressure your opponent a little bit with it. Sometimes if you go second, then you could do it like two turns behind the Fangard, just pressure with it. Normally your opponent would just take your Fangard attack, but if you have this behind your Fangard, then they, they just don't, <laughs> they don't want to. So. It does help you to uh, have your opponent guard a lot in the early game, or sometimes they just have to take it. If they retire at this, then that's perfect because that's what you want them to do because then you would want to call your center behind your finger because both of them only work behind the finger, of course. 
Uh, last but not least, we play two copies of a promo. This is a very, very, very good card. Uh, it does help with that extra attack with sometimes just fooling around with your opponent. And uh, it also helps for recycling some of the important stuff that you want back in your deck. So yeah, two is, in my opinion, enough. For the triggers, we play a strange lineup. Um, the starter doesn't really matter, so we're like zeros. And then um, why strange? Well, let's first start from normal, then go back to strange. Uh, we play four heals, I um, think that's stable as well, even in this deck. And then for the fronts, we actually play six fronts. We play three, two, one. So six fronts. Then you would say, okay, um, if you play six fronts, does that mean that you play six draws or you play six crits or what do you play? Or actually, I play four crits and two draws. I decided on going two on two. Um, I felt that this was the right way. Also with testing, I find myself sometimes just using the perfect guard for low attacks and I don't want that because you play lots of 5k's in this deck uh, lots of great ones that you don't want to guard with uh, lots of great threes that you don't want to discard the thing is you find yourself in so many situations where you just want that 30k on your hand and just guard with it and be done with it having the draw trigger in the deck is amazing don't get me wrong I mean, people would say, yo, D-Boy, isn't this deck actually combo reliant or combo pieces reliant? Yes, it is. Why don't you draw? Why, do you, why, why don't you play more draw triggers? Well, because with these draws, you still have to discard a card from your hand. Well, with him, he normally is more than enough to guard the attack of your opponent, especially in standard. If we talk premium, then that's a different story. But in standard, it's, it's good to run this. I mean, we have... Some decks that even say that you cannot guard with a perfect guard or yeah. But again, most of them say Sentinel and he's Sentinel as well. So that doesn't really make a difference in that case. But um, in most situations in this deck, it's okay to play the two on two. Okay, first let's talk about the new boys. So we have a new boy grade three and we have a new boy grade one. Here you go. Okay, so these cards are the new boys. First of all, let's talk about Backward Arrestor right here. Backward Arrestor has the ability that when he boosts a right or a left Arrestor, then you have a Dueling Dragon Fangard. Very important. Then you may Soul Charge one, and the boosted unit get an extra 10k. Which means that normally you hit the 17k column, which is your opponent. It's just a tanky shield especially if you go for this turn then they could just put a crit or a stand out there so 15k shield and that would be enough but when you give him that extra 10k would mean that you will hit the 27k which in that case the critical trigger when playing against protect and excel will not be enough for your opponent to guard the attack so they pretty much need to put more cards from their hand out there. If you will be able to drive check a front trigger, well, that's why fronts are devastating in this deck. Fronts are devastating in the late game and crits are good in the early game. So both are good, but depending on you're in the later, the, the, the early game. I still think that fronts are better, so you could even take out more crits to put more fronts if you want to. You could just play the four draws and eight fronts and no crits pretty much up to you but i did find this build the, the the most interesting to play and also the most fun to play but at the same time the strongest but that's in my eyes so if you guys are more of a Morokumo expert than me then of course you would know better so um it's pretty much up to you but it does make a difference also don't forget the soul charge is one the soul charge is good in this deck because you need it you need it for your left arrester but you also need it for your um, big shield, of course. Uh, Shiryuki, you need it for both. Then we have uh, Dual and Dragon New Boy right here. New Boy has two abilities. The first one is only Fangard, and if he's chilling on your Fangard, then all of your arresters get an extra 5k. As easy as that. Continuous ability. Very good only during your turn, of course. 
The second ability is a Fang Guard and a Ray Guard. That's what makes this card amazingly good and what he needed. This 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 boy right here, his, his small brother, um, is, is what Big Boy needed. And what he does is pretty much once per turn, if you have a Fang Guard Dueling Dragon in his card name, you may put the top card of your deck into your damage zone. So you actually take an extra damage, but it doesn't do the damage check. And then you search your deck for up to two cards with the artist and their card name, and you call them to regular circle and shuffle your deck. And then it said you do not perform a damage check. Of course, because he said put, put the top card of your deck. He doesn't say take a damage. So what does that do? He searches you to arresters, but most importantly, he gives you a damage. Sometimes your opponent doesn't want to, to give you the ultimate lockdown, or at least no lockdown at all, and then he will be able to, to, to give you that. There are two ways to do the lockdown. Of course, you have the fact that um, you always need your left arrester on the field. You always need left. Left needs to stay on the field. And then... You will be able with some Baku to search the right raster. And now you have both of them, and then you could use right as a skill to counterblast to that your opponent Fangard cannot restand. But if you have right and left, then he they also cannot right from the Zambaku skill. So you have the half lockdown and you, then you have the ultimate lockdown. The half lockdown is by if you have one of the two, then you just counterblast soul blast, get the other one on the field, he gets plus 5k, and your opponent cannot right. And he doesn't say normal right, he say right. So no right, no superior right, no bullshit right, no right at all. Sometimes, if your opponent doesn't really want you to do this skill, they don't give you counter blast. Or they don't give you a three counter blast for the ultimate lockdown, because then you say cannot stand and cannot right. So what you do, if they keep you at two damage, two face up damage, then first you activate the skill of small boy new boy and so you put him on the field you activate his ability you take one damage and then you call two arresters and the arresters that you normally call is left arrester and another arrester but not right then you call backward arrester right here or you call center arrester behind your fang guard if you don't have him already then you call this and then you will be ready to go now you use your counter blast Soul Blast, Counter Blast, activate his ability to get this card. Then you have both of them on the field, your opponent cannot write. Then you activate his skill to Counter to Blast 2, discard a card from your hand, and then your opponent could not stand. So they cannot stand, they cannot write, they cannot attack with their finger, they can't do much. And this is the ultimate lockdown. And he does help out with that a lot. Just taking that one damage is perfect, but also calling two, two arresters from your deck, any arresters that you want, means that these guys always will choose one of these two and then you will go for your left and then you make this crazy strong columns right here because this column could hit for a high number like this is 9 this is 17 17 27 27 plus 5 that's that's 32 by itself uh, that's that's crazy that's crazy good and yeah uh, of course, don't forget, you still have your uh, big finisher right here. Sengeki is another card that does wonders in this deck. It's so good, so strong. Uh, the fact that now you could create bigger columns with uh, with backward arrester, having more arresters on the field means your center arrester will be even stronger. Means that this card will be big um on attacks and your opponent will still only guard with great zeros and sometimes they don't have those great zeros on their hands and if you have counter blasts it's because you haven't really done the ultimate lockdown and you have some left then you could still use this card to get a counter blast to give him more power and with that he will be even bigger with a crit he will be 22 27 27 with a crit so your opponent could only use um great zeros to guard if they use sentinels then perfect you use his ability if you attack with him first um you attack you put this like you put something on the on the excel circle you attack with that first then you attack with your fang guard and then you have his ability if they sentinel this attack then you pretty much could call something on the top of that excel circle again so you call this because the same card as your fang guard you recycle something from the drop zone you have one more attack so another good 
good good shenanigans that you could do with this deck again you could do a lot of crazy things with this deck this deck is strong it get underestimated a lot like the previous deck profile we did on the channel with um mayor colony uh, in premium this is that kind of decks in standard if your opponent doesn't know how to play against it then they pretty much are gone they they, they just get destroyed and um yeah the deck got support so it's even better now uh there are ways to make this deck stronger to make it more um let's say consistent one of the the things that you could do to make this deck consistent is to take out the uh two foxes uh, so you take these two out to put great researchers in here great researchers help you to get the right great three to your hand is that better than having the right and left arrester yes it could be better if let's say you take uh, one of these out uh, you take these out and then you put another copy of center or central arrester in the deck you put a fourth copy of him, so you always have him in the early game behind your vanguard. That's good. And then you put the the, the two or the three copies of uh, of the great researcher in the deck, and with that, you're also good to go. But again, I didn't really find myself needing to to have that great researcher in the deck. You still have an okay draw power engine in the deck. You know, you play of course XL two, which draw you cards like crazy so that's that's good but again it's uh, pretty much up to you so that was it for this uh, deck profile i hope that you enjoyed it um i hope that you had fun with it um of course if you haven't subscribed to the channel as i said at the start of the video subscribe like and comment and in the comment section what you want to hear this video this week we want to hear if you guys are seeing these kind of decks in your locals if you play one of these decks yourself do you still play these kind of decks or you just jump into the strongest deck of the format and you just play that all right that's it for us thank you all for watching thank you for tuning in on our channel and we will see you next time bye bye